Is Hans Neumann, the chess player, a cheat? Where he could be, about to find out in this video from Never A Truer Word. Welcome to the channel. This is where we look at the words that people choose to use to work out whether they're being true or whether they're being deceitful. And this time we're somewhere I never thought I'd go, into the world of chess, to look at Hans Nyman. He's been accused of cheating by another player, a guy called Magnus Carlsen, I think that guy's name is. Um, and I'll be honest, uh, about a week ago I came across an interview with Hans Nyman and it is like a 20 minute non-stop rant and I thought this would be brilliant to analyse but I really didn't know where to start or, or end this video because um, he just talks and talks and talks. But I came across a, a, a clip of the interview uh, on YouTube. I've linked to that in the description below and I decided to look at just that excerpt from the Hans Nyman interview. And we're going to analyse the words that he's chosen to use to see if we can find out a bit more about what is going on with him. I recommend you watch all of that video because his, his, his demeanour and the way he spits words out and uses words is very interesting. But on this channel, we only look at the words that people use. We don't look at their body language or uh, the speech patterns or anything like that, just the words that they choose to use. And so he's been accused of cheating. So what are we looking for here? Well, we'd be looking for, if he's not a cheat, a direct denial, confronting the allegation head on and saying something like, I did not cheat in that match, or I am not a chess cheat, or even I play fairly all the time when I play chess. Something very direct that takes the allegation on and disputes it. We'll also be on a lookout for truthful deception, though. Uh, People don't like to lie in general. Lying causes all sorts of problems. So people prefer to stick with the truth, even if that's a very limited version of the truth. It's much easier to stick with the truth and maybe hide things using the truth than, than come out and tell lies. And the, the tactics that people do with that we call truthful deception. And if you're interested in truthful deception, there is a book available. It's a link to in the description below as well, which will uncover the lengths that people will go to, to use words, to use the truth, but to hide what is really going on with them. So let's look at Hans' words. And he starts with, I know there has been a targeted attack and some recent events have made it really, really difficult for me to not stop speaking. After the game against Magnus, obviously Magnus puts his tweet, clearly some insinuations, and then everyone starts to pile. Now, I think that Hans, I think he's got some communication problems. The way he talks, his brain seems to work much faster than his mouth seems to work. And obviously he's he's been accused of cheating. So that whether he's a cheat or whether he's a fair player, that's going to put him under some sort of stress when he talks. But the combination of these two things is making him misspeak sometimes. So we see things like the phrase, difficult for me to not stop speaking. I'm not entirely sure what that means. It, it, I think he means something, but the words just don't come out in the order um, that he, he really wants them to. And at the end, he says, everyone starts to pile. And he doesn't finish that by saying pile on. He just says, everyone starts to pile. What can we say about the words that he uses? Well, he talks about a targeted attack. Um, and I think very clearly from the get-go, he wants to be seen as a victim here. He wants to get sympathy on his side. He wants people to feel he's being picked on by using the phrase targeted attack. And uh, that immediately makes me think, is he doing that because he doesn't have the truth? He doesn't have any facts to say I'm a fair player. So what I'm going to do is create some image around me that I'm a victim and I want people to feel sorry for me so that they don't look too closely into what it is that I have to say to rebut the allegations. I think that's entirely possible. And look, he downplays what he's been accused of. That's interesting. He doesn't, like I said, in a direct denial, we're looking for someone who takes on the allegations and rebuts them. And he doesn't take on the allegations. He just, he downplays them and calls them clearly some insinuations and recent events. He doesn't say, being accused of a cheat has made it really difficult for me. And um, Magnus puts his tweet Clearly some insinuations. He doesn't say Magnus accuses me of cheating. He's downplaying this. That's um, interesting within itself. Some more words here. I get an email from chess.com saying that they've privately removed access to my chess.com account and that they have uninvited me from the Global Chess Championship. Now, three days ago, I met with someone very high up at chess.com at the Sinkfeld Cup. Had amazing, amazing words 
But because of this game against Magnus, because of what he said, they have decided to completely remove me from the website. I've, I've finally spotted some truth in something he says. I get an email from chess.com. Really straightforward, really direct. I believe he got an email from chess.com. I believe it said they've removed access to his chess.com account. The rest of it, eee, not so sure. Look at how he goes for status uh, three days ago. So this is very recent that, that, that someone high up wanted to talk to me and we had amazing, amazing words. I think status drives Magnus a lot and he wants to show us that he has his status because very recently he met with someone high up. I think he's more sensitive about being removed from the website than he is about being called a cheat or being removed from over the board tournaments because it seems to be his priority. It's, it's the first thing that he mentions in terms of sanction is that he has been, uh, he's been had access removed from his chess.com account. And he mentions it again at the bottom, they've removed me from the website. Um, I'm not a chess expert in any way whatsoever. So my guess would be that this chess.com account gives him status maybe um, in terms of, um, I don't know, do you, is there leaderboards on it or something like that? Or, or is it money? that drives him. I do think it's status that drives him, but he's certainly very sensitive about having the chess.com account removed, more sensitive about to that than about being called a cheat or being removed from tournaments. Listen, if you do know chess and you, you got some reasons why, they may be blindingly obvious to you why being removed from chess.com is more painful to um, hands than the other. Um, sanctions, then do get involved in the comments below and let me know. I'd be really, really interested to find out why that could be. And again, some downplaying because of this game against Magnus, not because of being accused of cheating against Magnus in that game, because of what he said, not because I was accused or because he was accusing me of cheating. He's downplaying what he's been accused of again. So he again, once again, he's not taking on directly what it is that he's been accused of. Instead, he's downplaying it. And he uses the word now a lot. He begins sentences with now. Now, three days ago, I met with someone um, and the, this is what we call a convincer. It's a word that's put in there to make us feel that everything that comes next must be true. Uh, who uses now at the start of sentences? It's people with higher status than us. Teachers at school, lecturers at college or university, our bosses are, are the type of people who have higher status than us and use the word now when they are talking. So I think his use of now, and he uses it here, he uses it more throughout this interview, um, when he uses now, I think he, he certainly thinks he's higher status than the interviewer who he's, who's, who's listening to him. Probably thinks he's higher status than most of us that are listening to it as well. So status orientated with a hint of arrogance there as well, I think, um, for Hans that comes out in his language. Now, this is, oh, he's begun with now again. Now, this is, this is a... And now this is after I have already fully admitted and they have the best cheat detection in the world. They know that I'm not a cheater and that I have given, I, I did everything to chess. I worked so hard and I, I chess is my entire life. Okay, now if they're going to try and think I'm going to be silent about what has happened, it's completely ridiculous. Wow, quite a lot there. Big stutters at the start with this. Now this is, this is, uh, and now this is, very stressed here, I think, or his brain is traveling a lot faster than his mouth is, is traveling. And he goes on to say, I have already fully admitted. But he doesn't say what he's fully admitted, which doesn't feel like a full admission to me. And why does the need to say he's, why does he need to say he's fully admitted it? You've either admitted something or you haven't admitted something. To put the word fully in there is to try and persuade us that he has fully admitted. So, I think the chances are, with everything else that I'm seeing and this sort of language, this is truthful deception in action, this fully admitted, rather than just saying I have admitted and not saying what he has admitted. I think he hasn't admitted everything that's going on. That's what I get from the words that he uses here. Just my opinion based on the words. But then look what follows. They have the best cheat detection in the world. Well, that's great, right? They, they could have the best cheat detection in the world. Doesn't mean you didn't cheat it. It may mean that you cheated and it was detected by the best cheat detection in the world, or it could be you cheated 
And it wasn't detected, even though it's the best cheat detection in the world. The fact he was playing under the best cheat detection uh, sort of uh, circumstances in the world does not mean you haven't cheated. The only thing that is a guarantee you haven't cheated is if you haven't actually cheated. He says, they know that I'm not a cheater. Interesting. They know that. He doesn't know that. Or he hasn't said that. He doesn't say, I'm not a cheater. He doesn't just come out straight and say it. He says, they know I'm not a cheater. I think it's the closest thing to a denial that we'll see in this um, excerpt that we're looking at, but it is not a direct um, denial. And then when he hasn't quite fully admitted something, when he's given some fuzzy logic as to why he's not a cheater and that other people know he's not a cheater, he then goes into martyrdom. I did everything to chess. I worked so hard. Chess is my entire life. And the impression he wants us to get come away with here is if chess is everything, if he is so dedicated to chess, wow, what a nice guy. He couldn't possibly cheat, could he? Oh, yeah, it happens all the time. It's it's no, it's just you going out there and trying to say, look how great I am. So um, he's really managing his images. He's been going for this victimhood, this sympathy thing. And now he's going for this, look how much I dedicate my life to chess. I couldn't possibly risk that all by cheating, would I? Many people do, um, Hans, so it doesn't convince me. Some more words. I met with Danny Wrench in Miami and I, and I, I... Danny Wrench was the person who confronted me and I was deeply, deeply indebted to him for handling the, the ban privately and giving me the chance to redeem myself. Now, after being, after being not playing chess.com events, I went to over the board tournaments and, I, and I'm not sure whether he said the word decided or whether he says the word said when I, I've listened back to it several times and I can't decide. So he either says, I decided to myself or I said to myself, let's go with decided. And I decided to myself that the only way to make up for my mistake was to prove to myself and to prove to others that I could win my, myself. Now that has been my mission. He doesn't quite say he cheated here. He infers it a little bit, but he, again, he doesn't talk about why he got a ban. Yeah, he doesn't mention, he just says he was banned. Um, he doesn't say that because he was cheating, he decided to, that there was ways to make it up. He just, he glosses over the fact that there was cheating that, that that brought him to all these points. And then again, looking at and seeing truthful deception in his language, um, the guy was giving me the chance to redeem himself. He doesn't say he gave me this redemption that, that I carried out or he allowed me to redeem myself. That would suggest the, the redemption is finished. It's just he got the chance to redeem myself. Interesting that that's not quite so solid. It's just a chance. It's not a factual thing. And then he does say that the only way to make up for my mistakes was to prove to myself and to prove to others I could win myself. He doesn't actually say that's what he did. He just says that was the only way to make up for his mistake. He doesn't commit to saying that he did it. He doesn't say that he has proved to himself and he has proved to others. He just says that, that, that the only way to make up for his mistake would be to prove to himself and prove to others. And that has been my mission. Not I have accomplished that mission or I have achieved my objectives with that mission, just that has been my mission. So in all his language here, he is wanting us to get the impression that I cheated I realized there was only one way to make up for that, which was to never cheat again and not be a cheat and to play fairly. But his words are all very qualified. There's a very many sort of loopholes in those words that if we picked on them um, and said, well, you said you, you'd you prove to others. And he'd say, no, I only said I, that I should prove to others. I didn't say I had proved to others. So I think he's trying to tie us up in loopholes and caveats when he talks here. Again, this is not convincing me. And again, it is far from a direct denial. If you're enjoying this video, please, if you press the like button, it enables other people to find it. it makes me feel good as well when you press the like button. So if you could do that, it's, it's really appreciated. And if you want to get more videos like this, then hit the subscribe button. And we regularly do videos on the words that people choose to use. And if you're finding this one interesting, I think you'll find some of the other ones that we do interesting too. And comments as well, please, especially on why he is more sensitive about losing his chess.com account than any of the other sanctions that come his way. Here's some more Hansi's words now. 
And that that is why I've lived in a suitcase for two years. That is why I have played 260 games in one year. That is why I've trained 12 hours a day because I have something to prove now that chess.com has suddenly decided to hop on Magnus's insinuations. He carves very direct accusations. Now they see the opportunity. Okay, we're just going to get rid of this. Now, this is very interesting. I mean, we can see the victimhood here again. We can see more of the martyrdom. Look how hard I work. If I work this hard, if I dedicate myself to chess so much, I can't be a cheat. He brings up accusations and insinuations again. He doesn't rebut them at all. He doesn't directly deny them at all. He just brings them up. It says they're there, but there's nothing to knock them down. Only trying to give us the impression that because he's lived in a suitcase and played all these games, that he couldn't be a cheat. And there's a complete logic fail in this. So start at the phrase Magnus's insinuations and how chess.com has suddenly decided to hop on Magnus's insinuations. At the time of this interview, the insinuations were at most two weeks old. Right? Two weeks old. But all of these things that he's saying, lived in a suitcase for two years, played 260 games in one year, trained 12 hours a game. I have something to prove now because uh, he's done all this because I have something to prove now. So because of something that happened two weeks ago, you've been doing things for two years to prove it wrong. Your logic is is really out of your hands. You're really, really not convincing me with your words. I believe this is completely unfair. This is a targeted attack. And if you look at my games, this is not this has nothing to do with my games. So why do you specifically, why do you, why does the CEO of chess come to me and say, we're looking forward to having you at the Global Chess Championship. We're looking forward to you playing on our events. And then right when I beat Magnus, they decide to remove my account and not let me play in the tournaments. Lots to unpack here. He's telling us things things that are not, rather than telling us things as they are. So it's not nothing to do with my games. Well, it is. It is something to do with your games, but you're telling us it's not anything to do with your games. He starts asking questions. Why do you, why does the CEO come to me and then maybe it's Magnus and why does he remove my account? Asking questions is a great deflection tactic. It's another way of batting away the things that you're sensitive about, the allegation that he cheated in a match. And actually, the answer is really straightforward, Hans. They kicked you out and everyone's looking at you a bit differently because someone has accused you of cheating. So there's the answer for you right there. He talks again about a targeted attack. Again, it's the victimhood thing, but he doesn't say why or, or what this targeted attack at is. It's a phrase he likes to use, but he's got he's got no he's got nothing to back up what he means by a targeted attack or why he feels this is a targeted attack. And then at the very bottom, I beat Magnus. They decide to remove my account and not let me play in the tournaments. Account comes first, tournament comes second. Yeah, like I've said a few times before, and he keeps backing it up. He's more sensitive about the removal of his account than not being able to play in the tournaments. Hans continues, this is absolutely ridiculous. And they've only done this because of what Magnus has said and what Hikaru says and that the entire social media and chess world is completely attacking me and undermining me. But, and they maybe would think that I would be afraid to tell the entire world that I cheated in some random games and I cheated in a tournament of something uh, inaudible. I cheated in a tournament of, but I'm not afraid because I know who I am and I know the chess player that I am and I know what I give to chess. So I'm not going to be scared to be manipulated and to be conspired against Try to ruin my chess career when I know what has happened. Look at the first couple of lines here. Look at the words that Mag uh, that Hans uses to expand the size of what he's talking about. This is absolutely ridiculous. Why is he trying to consider that tell us it's not just ridiculous? It's absolutely ridiculous. The entire social media and chess world is against them, not just the social media and chess world, but the entire. So again, he's trying to change the severity and the magnitude of it. And they are completely attacking me, not just attacking me, but they are completely attacking me. This is truthful deception language where people use needless words, add them in to increase the severity of what they are saying. Um, so I don't think he thinks what he has to say is strong enough. So he turns up 
the the heat on it by using those big words absolutely entire and completely to make it seem bigger than it really is and again he's playing the victim card again he's playing the martyr card um and look he says he does say if you take it if you clip it i cheated in some random games and i cheated in a tournament but he doesn't directly say that there's a qualifier before it they maybe would think I would be afraid to tell the entire world that I cheated in some random games and I cheated in a tournament. He doesn't say directly, without the qualifier, I cheated in some random games and I cheated in the tournament. He he doesn't. He doesn't come out and say that. He just says that they think I would be afraid to do that. And again, he doesn't, again, he doesn't come out and address what he's been accused of doing recently. So in conclusion, there is no... There is no denial of cheating in the game that he was is alleged to have cheated in. And there's no denial of cheating recently um, as a chess player either. He doesn't say he plays fair. He doesn't state it in the positive sense either. He doesn't say he plays fair. He doesn't say I'm a fair player. I play fair and I play square. He doesn't say that. Hans is absolutely obsessed with status. Um, he talks about the CEO and someone high up and how nice they were to him and how happy they were to have him in chess. And he paints himself as a victim and someone who's a martyr to chess. He's absolutely trying to make us feel sorry for him and make us question why anyone would, this nice guy who has status and everyone wants to know him and he's been, a, he's been a victim, he's been attacked. I mean, why would anyone accuse him of cheating? Why do you need to do all of that? Why can't you just come out with that direct denial that we were looking for? He has not said anything nearly enough to convince me that he hasn't cheated recently or in the game where it was alleged that he cheated. If you enjoyed that, neveratruerword.com is the website where you will find more words of people in the news um, and, and some crime ones as well. And we look at the words in them and try and find out what's really going on underneath. If you want to get involved on social media, if you go to the link tree address, which is on your screen and in the description below, you can contact me or connect on social media. And if there's any words you want to look at next, um, maybe in the world of chess, if this is how you have come across the video, um, then please drop them in the comments or get in touch on social media. If you like true crime, you might want to have a look at the Words of West Cork podcast. There's a link to that in the description below as well. It looks at an unsolved murder uh, in Ireland in the 1990s and the words of at, from the people at the heart of the investigation again. Though, like I say, there's links to that in the description below. And we'll see you soon for another video from Never a Truer Word.